folks, welcome back. I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. And I do have to apologize. I have been very lax um, with my video updates. It's, uh, the whole holidays just screws everything up. I think I've just gotten my house in order a little bit. Um, I still have to open some Christmas gifts. I can't believe I have like unused Christmas gift set up. Oh, I'm still using my most amazing Christmas gift. So happy about this. Yeah, baby. That's pretty cool. Gets voices really well. I can set it aside as long as I set the volume up right. I don't get much reverb, so that's pretty cool. I can sit back. I can go wireless. I'm happy about that. I'm not here to talk about that. Um, again, it's, it's old news. But I actually did make a little tribute video to uh, John Huber, now that I realized what his name was. Um, it was one of those weird, sad things, like totally out of the blue. I think from what I've heard, which is, take it for what you will, I think he was at like an aerobic spin class or something and just felt like he couldn't catch his breath. And then he went to the hospital. And unfortunately, that, that was that. Um, it was non-COVID-related lung issues. It was weird because, I mean, he, he led really the good, clean lifestyle, being the family man and everything. So, it's, so sometimes with, re especially younger wrestlers, I know we've had a slew of older wrestlers, wrestlers pass away. That's, that's understandable. Uh, and Kamala died. Uh, he had so many health issues. Um, Tracy Smothers was just getting old. Um, a few others. Again, you get to be 70, 80 years old. That's, I don't want to say expected, but at, at least it's natural, though. Uh, with younger wrestlers... Um, either they know they're on something they shouldn't be and it's just like, well, it's, it's going to happen eventually. Or they like the fast cars and motorcycles and don't really reel in that kind of passion and something happens in a car, a motorcycle accident. It's kind of freakish, but you kind of say, yeah, he enjoyed that stuff. It was just something waiting to happen. This was like totally out of the blue. So again, here's my, or here's what I made as a tribute to John Huber, uh, Brody Lee, Luke Harper. I gave Luke Harper his WrestleMania moment against Hobo Tom. Contest is a hell in a Hello, folks. Yeah, so it was a sad passing of Brody Lee and Luke Harper. Well, I already mentioned his real name. I wanted to give him kind of my little tribute. I had kind of a little sad song playing. But I wanted to make it a little bit more special. I wanted to give him his WrestleMania moment. And it just can't be any WrestleMania moment. It has to be facing the one, the only, Hobo Tom. In a hell in a cell. At... The showcase of the Immortals, WrestleMania. Give him his moment, as he so rightfully deserved it. Again, you probably saw the little nice little song, the little picture I had. Again, this, the, well, the Macho Man ascending to heaven. Yep, it's kind of a sad time. I don't know.
social media has been on fire ahead of this one, but now it's time to get down to business. These guys are going to be very aggressive. You know they're going to use any means necessary to go home with a win. Well, here in Mobile, Alabama, these fans don't need a primer or a media guy. They know all the players in this thing. Oh, oh they just, just goes on. He wisely oh, ducks out of the ring after that. Huge maneuver. I don't know if it was so wise. It was out of necessity. Oh, Luke Harper has got some bad intentions here. And he brings the action back inside the ring. Yeah, I, I, I oh, think oh, this is oh, a good oh, Luke Harper is even big compared to the likes of Hobo Tom. That's impressive. Each of these competitors is looking for the slightest. End of story. This one's over. Now, who does a methodical pace benefit, King? Well, I'll tell you. Whenever the dominating competitor takes his time, it gives everybody a chance to catch their breath. God, there was nothing accurate about that attempt at offense. Oh, you're being too kind. Some people would use other words to describe what we just witnessed. Oh no, someone's going through the cage already. That's going to be it. Luke Harper. How about that finishing move? He's getting hooked. want to do this outside the ring. Well, I don't blame it. Keep the action inside the ring. That's where you're going to win this thing. He's looking hapless out there. In trouble now. It may be just a matter of time. You know what? Guys, no matter the format or competitors involved, you know we're in for a great one here. Oh, looking to make a statement here. Incredible! Oh. This has to be it! Whoa! Hobo Tom's son! Hope you get it here! I hope you get it here! Life's a never sold time. before. Well, as long as it's up before that three count, that's all that matters. There's no keeping this guy down tonight. You know, it's hard to believe, but it looks like he still has some gas left in his tank. Can 
know, we're here will go a long way in solidifying one of these guys' claims of being the best in the business. I can't believe everything that's transpired thus far. It's been so physical. You're right about that, Cole. This has been an all-out war.
stopping this one before somebody gets seriously injured. He's in full-on attack mode now. Ooh, a little showboating going on here. Oh, looking to put an end to this one. It's got to be over now. Tell you, the 
these guys are in the best shape I've ever seen them in. Oh my god. That's it. He's out. Huh? There can only be one top dog here in the WWE. Oh, and a win here will go a long way in solidifying one of these guys' claims of being the best in the business. Oh no, no, no. Oh no, Lou Harper. I'm sorry, sir. Only way to go in the business is right on your back. Farewell, sweet prince. And you, sir, were a giant among men. Here's your winner, representing the crew. Ta-da! Gotta be happy with that win right there. I can't say that I'm all that surprised by the outcome, Cole. When it's your night, it's your night. And what an incredible journey it has been to get to this wrestling... Now, with that being said, again, my heart does go out to his family, his sons. I think he leaves behind two sons, a wife. Um, I'll get into that a little bit when we talk about AEW, which is next. And then this is a triple threat video. There's going to be a lot of stuff here for one show, and I don't have that much time to make it because I have to get to the gym. And... Still do a whole bunch of stuff. See if I can get to church and then go to work. We'll see what happens. But uh, let's start off the show. AEW again. The Bucks of Youth. Shirt comes out. In fact, I'm just going to wear this one shirt. I'm going to try and speed it up that way. This is probably going to be one of the longest non-wrestling videos I've made in a while. I do somewhat apologize for it, but not really. Uh, so AEW, tra -la, again, I saw with my shoutouts, tra-la-la, -la. yes, three of those women head back, and so does Jordan Grace. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Yes, uh, we'll get to that later. Uh, so, AEW starts off with um, John Huber got the 10 bell salute. John Moxley's in very heartfelt words. Um, you can tell that wasn't scripted. Kind of throughout the night, there would be people that, that would give stories. Um, kind of, look, AEW, the, the thing that AEW does good, and this is a weird kind of double edged thing, is that they let the wrestlers do their own promos and their own talking. Sometimes that turns out bad. In this instance, it, it was very heartfelt. Um, John Mossy could barely contain himself. Uh, remember, I think he wrestled in some in CZW with Brody Lee when he was there, so he's known him a long time. Again, he came up with him through the whole uh, NXT system. I want to say... Johnny Huber, Luke Harper at one time was one of the Rosebuds. That goes back a while, though. I know Braun Strowman was. I think Luke Harper, I think, yeah, Luke Harper was at one time a Rosebud. Again, going way back to NXT. And with John Moxley, it was very heartfelt. Um, you could tell he was welling up. Those weren't alligator tears. This is where AEW shines, where it's it's not really scripted to that effect. And in this instance, it actually works like that. So um, a after this, uh, we have the Hardy Party versus Young Bucks. We get to some wrestling. Um, let's see here. Who's the best? 
I don't know. Oh, yeah. No, no that's not that. Um, Hardy Party versus Young Bucks. Uh, starts off the trade of Armingers for a tentacle. Some rope running. Again, the, the deep. Uh, and the drop to finished off with the drop to hold. The Young Bucks, they countered. They're countered by Matt Hardy. Again, Matt Hardy still is that wily veteran. That's really good to see. Uh, then the Young Bucks eventually do get it together. They, they have... And, and you can, for good or for bad, they have some of the most amazing double team moves around. They, again, they're brothers, kind of like in like very brotherly tradition. They, they know each other. Like Harlem the Heat, the Steiner brothers. They really don't need to communicate. They kind of know and play off each other, which makes them really good. However, they do a little too much sometimes. Eh, eh. So it's that whole way. Uh, Matt uh, is definitely the Wiley veteran. Uh, Cassidy from Private Party. He, he gets tagged in. He takes the Young Bucks. Uh, Matt, he does a second rope elbow. Maybe the top rope elbow. And this was just on, on the, I think, on the side rope anyway. So you need to lean back a little bit. Um, when he got tagged in to, right to the tricep. That was actually pretty cool. I like when they do tradi very traditional, classic tag team maneuvers like that. You know, harkens back to the old days of AWA, the stuff that this guy actually remembers. Oh, and by the, um, I'll get to that after this match. Um, Cole Cabana is there. Um, with, because again, it's the Hardy Party versus Young Bucks and Cole Cabana. Cole Cabana, he gets a hot tag. You know, you're just waiting for Cole Cabana comes in. He drops elbow after elbow. Very classic, dusty road type wrestling. That was good to see. Um, Siren Kapan does a kip up, which is actually is very impressive. Uh, then, of course, it's a, your normal spot fest. Uh, Nick hits a Frankenstein from the top rope. Private party. They do the twist of fate, moonsault, and then a splash. Only gets two count. This is where it gets old. The fact that there are so many big moves and everyone kicks out of everything. Although, in this case, the save was actually made. Um, Colt eventually does Chicago Skyline, so mounts a driver, and then Colt Cabana finishes off with the uh, Superman clutch, Superman pin. And I'll tell you what, after that match, Colt Cabana just said uh, he let it all flow out. He was that emotional. I know he and Brody Lee, they, they did do a lot together, especially in the indies. So again, this was kind of one of those things where Cole Cabana, you could tell he was barely keeping it together throughout the match. At the end, it's just, I think the match was good. It was therapeutic for him. It let him kind of get out and express stuff. Um, it's one of those things where if you're at work, work is sometimes the best therapy. Because, okay, this horrible thing happened. You still have to do this so you can focus. After you're done and put all your energy to this, okay, this time to release and let it go. So overall, I'll tell you what, it was a good cheeseburger match. And remember, this whole show is really based on the Brody Lee tribute, on the John Huber Brody Lee tribute. Uh, because then we had Kingston, the Butcher and the Blade, taking on Stu Grayson, Evil Uno, and Lance Archer. Just starts off as a brawl, as it probably should whenever you have these six individuals. Um, then the bunny interferes a little bit. Butcher and Blade get their licks in. Shake Roberts interferes. Uh, Evil Uno actually has a pretty good neck snap. Again, Evil Uno, he, he was touting Brody Lee. I think, um, I know John Huber wrestled a lot in Rochester. Um, I, I, I won't say anything bad, but, but Evil Uno is a Canadian. So obviously those two probably had some matches together. Um, so, so there is kind of that. Then there was a boss man slam that came up. Have not heard that name in a while. The big sidewalk slam. Again, used to be a, a devastating finisher. Now eh, kind of everyone does it. Uh, Archer and Butcher, they, it's a big hoss fight. Two men square up. Two men enter. Well, no men leave because they just like beat each other up. It was a big splash. Uno 
could not stop. That was so weird. He, like, ran right by. That was weird. Again, not the most polished match, but not bad, though. Uh, the Butcher and Blade, they do the double team move. Uh, Kingston has a DDT. <laughs> then the Snake gets Eddie Kingston. Again, there's, 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 there's some, some tomfoolery going around. Eventually, Grayson, Evil, uh, Stu Grayson, Evil, uh, the Dark Order, and Lance Archer win. Or you can say Super Smash Brothers, what, Evil Smash Brothers, whatever. They win. It was okay. It was, it was actually pretty enjoyable, too. It was a cheeseburger match. And this is where I thought, this is going to be a whole tribute show? I already know who's going to win. With the exception of one match. And yeah, other than that, you're like, you kind of know who's going to win. Again, it was a whole tribute show. At least in my tribute, I made it quasi-realistic. For a video game, I guess. Then we had... Um, Hangman, Adam Page, Alex Reynolds, and John Silver taking on MJF, Santana, and Ortiz. This was actually pretty good. Um, oh, MJF is amazing, by the way. And actually, I'm, I'm going to upgrade this match. Just because of MJF's... Who does that? He's, he's evil. Wow, the inner, uh, the inner circle there. Again, at the start of the match, they all show up. The double team moves um, with, by the inner circle. Uh, whenever they would send one out, the inner circle would kind of beat them up while, and, while the ref got distracted. Poor Reynolds. He was kind of the brunt of it for the whole time. MJF hit a big, hit a big uh, delayed suplex. That's always good to see. LAX, Santana, Ortiz. Uh, they set up the assisted standing moonsault. That's always that's always fun. Santana with a back rate. Tiger style. Right, Chispa? Chispa style. Oh, my cell phone went off too. I'll go check that in a moment. Let me take let me take care of this match first. Uh, where was I now? And then oh yeah! What a jackass! This <laughs> MJF. Brody Lee's kids are sitting ringside. He has the mask on. He literally says, hey, kid. Oh, wow, I, I can't do that on YouTube. But, yeah, that's not good. He, he gave some child the finger because he's MJF. And, and that, that's, not, that's not the end of it either. Um, Silver gets a hot tag. He takes out everyone. Uh, he does a flying cross body. And then it's a sort of spot fest. Um, it's like a sliced poison rana. I guess that's the best way I can describe the one move that the Dark Order hit. And then, let's see, the one guy into a power suplex. And something by by Reynolds. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. Uh, Wardlow then shows up. This is funny. He shows up as a distraction. Then Eric Rowan shows up. Big Red shows up. Again, longtime tag team partner and friend of Brody Lee and our Luke Harper. And I'm playing with my cat still because she's just pestering me to go outside. But, um, yeah. <laughs> and that was funny. MJF then, then he goes outside, pulls off the mask of the kid. And then the kid says, I've had enough. He takes a kendo stick to the top. <laughs> and Jeff eats a kendo stick shot. That was good. Um, Alex, uh, Alex Reynolds and John Silver hit their finisher. Paige then follows that up with a buckshot lariat. Paige very graciously says, Mr. Silver, it's all yours. That was really good. All the antics in this match actually really made the match feel better. It just made it go along. It made it make sense. It gave us some flow to it. It was really good. I'll tell you, MJF's <laughs> perfect heel. It's a surf and turf match.
So yeah, that, that was that. Seer, how is oh, what did he go to? What are you up to today? There we go. There's that. Um, then we had Kofi Kingston, very heartfelt. Again, anyone that gave this, and anyone that gave a tribute, really, I think with the exception of maybe Chris Jericho, but Chris Jericho's been in the business so long, he kind of knows what to do and stuff. He knows how to control his emotions. Um, Kofi, uh, again, Eddie Kingston started bawling at the end. You could tell he was all choked up. Again, this is one of the good things about letting the wrestlers be, be human beings. And then I figured this is the one match out of all of them where something screwy could happen. But it was Ty Conti and Anna Jay taking on Britt Baker and Penelope Ford. One of these women is not like the other. I'll say that. I'll tell you what. I never realized Ty Conti was, was so sexy looking. I didn't realize she had such a booty either. It did not show that in NXT. Um, Anna Jay's Amazing looking too. Penelope Ford. Yeah, she's amazing looking. And Britt Baker's meh. And Britt Baker to me, she's way too skinny. And I've said that before. Like, you, you can, you see her, she has her six pack, but that's because there's no fat on it. And it's not really muscular, unlike Amber Nova, who's up there on the door of wrestling. What I was kind of disappointed was not at the NAWA thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm setting my standards too high for, for wrestling nowadays. Who knows? Um, but in this match, it was, a, it was a good start. Good rope running by Moth. Then there was, an, again, I don't know what it is with Penelope Ford. And Britt Baker's not. But they're just not in sync with what's going on in the ring. And it's not that good being out of sync where it feels like a big it's a big fight feel it has that clunky fight feel to it no this just feels clunky and that's again Ty Conti is actually good and Jay's good Penelope Ford was okay uh, Britt Baker uh, I don't know I don't know what it is about Britt Baker I, I don't I don't like her heel work it seems forced um, all the moves that she does seem to be it's like just having female Adam Cole up Baby, out there. It's, I don't know, it's just a weird feeling. Um, put it on before it hit the floating ribs. That was really good. And then there was a double team spot, uh, double kicks by both Britt and Penelope. Uh, then there was the, then Penelope before it hit like a, a, a botched back, backstabber. And this is where I'm like, okay. If you're going to have them in a tag team situation, it's good because it, 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 a tag, if, if you're, if you're a, if you're a new wrestler, being in a tag team situation should be good because all of your weaknesses should be hidden by your partner. Not in this case. In this case, it's doubly so. With the exception of Ty Conti and Anna because they just seem more seasoned. I mean, Ty Conti, for all of the bad things that happened to her in NXT, she probably gained boatloads of experience. She knows how to handle herself in the ring. Anna Jay, again, she can let Taya Conti kind of run the match and do what she needs to do. And that's smart. Um, see so eventually Taya Conti and Anna Jay pick up the win over Britt Baker and Penelope Ford. I think Penelope Ford eats the pin. Just, I don't know, not that good of a match and those boshes when 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 i can tell you've boshed a couple things and that was one really bad whiff of a kick can of soup when Britt baker does her promo thing uh thunder rosa comes out beats her up thunder rosa's hot with that face paint on i don't know what it is she paints her face and even like street clothes. She's like amazing look. I almost thought it was a shoot. She's like, whoa, she's like 
wearing like normal clothes and not wrestling boots. And she just comes out running into the ring. Whoa! Thunder Roses. Muy, muy bonita. And then Chris Jericho, again, he, he's like the one person who could keep it all together. Again, he has that the whole experience factor. Then we had Team Taz taking on Cody Rhodes, 10, and Orange Cassidy. Um, Powerhouse Hobbs, he has a big shoulder tackle. He looks great in orange and black, by the way. Uh, Starks, again, he, he gets in now. He gets some chops of his own. He starts to eat some chops, though. Orange Cassidy very lazily rolls into the ring. Cage just wrecks Orange Cassidy as he should. Starks, for the most part, gets beat up. There's a person who gets beat up for the heels. Uh, Cody gets, gets hot tag eventually. Ten takes out Team Taz. Starks is, this is a running spear. OC Orange Cassidy breaks it up. Cage flatlines. Okay. Cody, that looked absolutely amazing. However, in the ring, I'm outside the ring. You had Team Taz, Powerhouse, Hobbs. They eventually all got wiped out. So they're just outside the ring. Um, poor, poor Ricky Starks eats all the finishers. Cody says, 10, zero man, you, t you pin him. Uh, 10 pins him. Uh, then they start to try and beat up. On ten, Darby Allen and, and Sting show up, kind of, a, kind of as, as a Knights thing. It was an okay match. Um, it was a solid cheeseburger match. Then they had the whole Brody Lee tribute. This was actually really well done. This impressed me about AEW. They know how to treat their wrestlers. They treat their wrestlers like human beings. This was actually a really good, fun tribute. However. Vince is going to see this and say, wait a second, what's Seth Rollins doing there? What's Big E doing there? Luke Harper, he has no control over. So it'll be interesting to see Vince's reactions. I know there were things about Seth Rollins being delayed. I wonder if this has any... Vince says such weird things, though. You never know. I'll tell you what. Minus one, Brody Lee Jr., uh, John Huber Jr., he hopped right through those ropes. If I tried to do, I was amazed. He hopped right through those ropes. I was shocked. Some wrestlers have trouble getting through those ropes. Britt Baker has trouble getting through those ropes. This guy had zero issues. Um, John Huber's widow is there. Uh, very heartfelt tribute. Uh, um, uh, minus one, uh, John Huber Jr. He got to wear the mask. He actually got a very nice, or maybe it was the And because I actually had Thursday off, um, I watched NXT. I watched the rerun of NXT over there on Wootoo. I figured I have some time on my hands. I might as well truly relax. So I watched NXT. So this is going to be your triple threat show. Uh, NXT started off with Brizongo and the Grizzled Young Veterans. This was actually really good. The one thing I will say about NXT is that the wrestling is phenomenal. Even though... Well, actually, yeah. With these two teams, it was actually really good to see. Uh, the Grizzled Young Veterans, they control Tyler Breeze for most of the match. They do the classic tag team isolation, leave leave him in their corner. Uh, Fandango eventually gets a hot tag. It's the inverted atomic drop. Whenever I see any version of any atomic drop, it's always good to see. Um, let's see here. Brizango, again, good tag work. Fandango, again, he came flying off the struts and hurt his knee somehow. Uh, this, of course, once you show something's injured, the Grizzled Young Veterans began to work over Fandango's knee. There was a dragon screwed leg whip from the top rope. That looked freaking gnarly as anything. That's great. They have to do that. Save that for big matches. That's, that's something I want to see. That's, oh, my God. Holy shit. Holy shit moment. I don't want to see that happen all the time because then eh, it's just going to get old and you'll expect it way too much. Uh, Breeze eventually misses a dive. He's a double forearms. I'm in the ring. 
Uh, Breeze and gets isolated two on one. Then there was the wheelbarrow code breaker by the Grizzled Young Veterans. I'll tell you what, this was a really good, strong showing. The only. I don't even know if I should say that. It just. No, this match was actually pretty well paced. You know what? This is this actually was a good solid cheeseburger match. And then well, at least I can sleep in. So that's a good sign. Oh, there we go. This will be a short show. Then we had um, uh, then they had the various announcements, the tag team of the year, undisputed era. Yeah, they had the female athlete of the year, Io Shirai. Male athlete was Adam Cole. Um, match of the year was Finn Balor versus Kyle O'Reilly. I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, competitor of the year was Io Shirai. So that's pretty good. And they had their year in, year in awards, the Golden Bell, whatever. Then it was, um, next match was... Oh, I forget her name. Mercedes Martinez, that's right. Taking on, I think if I heard it right, Valentine Reynas? I don't know, Jabber one. Um, again, Mar uh, Menendez... Mercedes Martinez definitely the, has that heel tactics. Um, she just toys with the jobber. Jobber tried. What can you say? Um, with, a, with a good back. With, with a couple stomps. It was okay. Um, Mercedes Martinez. Again, picked her up by the neck. Overhead toss. Air raid crash. Yep, that's it. Um, your typical squash match, it did probably absolutely nothing for Mercedes Martinez. That, uh, I don't even think she got enough in-ring exposure time. This was a can of soup. Then we had Roderick Strong taking on Pete Dunne. This was actually a really good match. This was a very good classic technical match. Um... Pete Dunn, again, great joint manipulation, trying to break the fingers, always going after the digits, always working over some very particular body part of Roderick Strong. Strong, again, I hate to say it, but he is the messiah of the backbreakers. A backbreaker, uh, the back, the backdrop done onto the outside. That was really good. Uh, Dunn hit his, his chops. And they're so good. How uh, works over Roderick Strong in the rope in the rope section kind of has him pinned there. And then I'll tell you what, Roderick Strong has like a near perfect drop kick. That was amazing. You rarely see perfect drop kicks. Strong goes off the ropes with the forearm, then a backdrop, and then a half 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 Nelson slam. I was going to see, then they, it's a trade of kicks. The triangle choke got, <laughs> the Pete Dunn applied to Roger Strong, got countered into a backbreaker. Uh, eventually, it's too much for Roderick Strong. Peter Dunn hits the bitter end. Peter Dunn wins. I'll tell you what, this is another surf and turf match. Then, let's see, it's a, ma a match of the year. It's, um, when Finn was giving his golden belt, he's like, I don't care. I'm, I want to go out there. I'm going to go cut my promo on, on Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, it'll be interesting to see at the next takeover if we have Demon Balor. have not seen De Demon Finn Balor taking on Kyle O'Reilly. Then Scarlett Bordeaux starts talking like Celtic stuff, I guess. Where she's speaking in tons. Killer Cross comes out. Damien Priest shows up, then Damien Priest and Killer Cross just brawl. Um, Finn and Kyle Riley just say, hey, it's not our thing. Uh, there was a promo there by Rhea, Rhea Ripley. And then, 
Pantasma uh, Legato come out. And they say, yep, this is going to be our year. I am the best cruiserweight champion or El Fantasma. Or Ijo del, Ijo del Fantasma. I forget what he calls him. Uh, Santo Escobar comes out. Says, I'm the best one ever. I need challengers. Then the Lucha, Lucha, Lucha house party come out. And they take on Infantesimo Elegato, um, Joaquin Phoenix, I think, and Raul Mendoza. Wow, I got his name right. Normally I just call him DJZ. All the flying stuff by Lucha House Party really takes um, DJZ and Raul Mendoza off guard. Uh, Lindsay Dorado, the Poison Rana was great. It's always good to see that. Oh, yeah. Um, Grand Metal League. Again, this walk rope elbow drop. Very fast. Very fast paced. Very quick match. I was shocked by how quick it was, actually. Kind of wanted to see more of this. It's a ham sandwich of a match. Then the future star of the year um, was Austin Theory. He won. It was between Indy Hartwell. Oh, yeah. Future Star of the Year was Austin Theory. Indy. <laughs> this is so funny. Indy Hartwell has, like, the like the weird black lipstick. She's, like, a darker version. She, she's, like, a more tanned version of Billy Kay. Um, Johnny Gargano says, don't say the C word, cunt. Oh, no, not that C word. I guess you can say that word, but you can't say curse, though. He threw something, uh, broke a mirror, walked under a ladder. Bad stuff happening. Again, competitor of the year was Io Shirai. Then the, uh, the main event of the evening. Wow, this show goes by so... Well, this is two hours? Almost an hour and a half, but that's about, that's about the commercial. So, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, it was Leon Ruff, and they, they, don't, they don't do a lot of uh, in-between stuff either. It was Leon Ruff versus Johnny Gargano. Uh, starts off with an arm ringer, Ruff. Again, this up, down, up, down, up, down, kip ups. And then, oh no, that, that's uh, Johnny Gargano missed the slingshot spear when he got sent to the outside. Uh, Ruff, again, really rolling wrestling moves. It's different. You don't really see wrestlers do that. It's good, it's original. I like original stuff. Good, good things going on there in NXT. Eventually, when they start touring again, pro I would think they're going to start opening up probably at least the Florida tour. It has to be kind of soon. I would hope. I can, ho I, I, I can hope for everything I want. doesn't mean it's going to happen either, though. I was like, I got to see the NAWA, I think. But again, Florida is the only open... I think Florida right now is the only open state in the union. I think, yeah, Massachusetts is still closed down. California is going through chaos. Unless you're in, like, Idaho, North Dakota, I don't know, parts of northern Utah. Who knows what's going on up there. Wyoming, you don't hear much from. New Mexico, other than the big cities, no one really cares. So, yeah, just weird stuff going on. Oh, I digress, though. Uh, Ruff thing is shoved over the top rope. Gargano hit this uh, straight jacket backbreaker. That was awesome. Again, Johnny Gargano has so many good moves. He is the, he is same he has Johnny same face though. I hate to I hate to agree with Jim Cornette about that because Gargano is one of my favorite wrestlers, mainly because he smiled at my nephew, and I saw that. Thank you very much, Johnny Gargano. That was pretty cool. Uh, Ruff does a corner comeback, a backbreaker. Backbreaker, neckbreaker combo. That's always good to see. I do like to see combo wrestling. Gargano hit the gar Gargano escape. Uh, Ruff hit a lethal injection and then a frog splash. You know, Johnny Gargano and his bunch of minions were too much. Eventually, <laughs> <coughs> something went down the wrong pipe there for a second. Mm. A little bubbly water. A lemon and lemon zest. Actually, that does taste really lemony. 
Eventually, Gargano, Johnny Gargano wins his match. Wins his match. He retains his title. The sea word's broken. Hey, that sounds terrible. The curse is broken. That sounds a little bit better. And it was it was a good showing. Um, Leon Ruff, I, I, he always seemed to be that like, hey, better you than no one. Better you than him. Better anyone than Johnny Gargano, as far as Damian Priest was concerned. It was a good match. Um, uh, it was a. You knew Gargano wasn't going to lose that belt, though. It was a ham sandwich of a match. And let's get to a little SmackDown action. Let's see here. I did this kind of backwards. Again, this is that weird show. Holly's always screws me up, though. Um, they... I was happy WWE did something. It could have been more. They could have had Bray Wyatt. Be another person who was mentioned on AEW, but not here. Um, Seth again. They just had the little placard uh, in, in memory of Sean Huber. And then in quotation marks, Luke Harper. They didn't even acknowledge Brody Lee. Um, what was it? 1979 to 2020. Again, that's just so weird. Knowing that. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a Coast Guard helicopter. Indeed. It's just so weird knowing that I'm older than he was and he passed away first. It's just weird. I mean, as you get older, I guess that happens more frequently. But, again, I still think... I can do things that I did when I was 20 years old. I try. Uh, so this match, let's see here, started off, again, a little Luke Harper sign. Could have been better. They did, you know what? I won't criticize them too much. They did something at least. Then there was a recap of the Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens thing last week. In the steel cage, uh, Roman Reigns cuts a promo. And Kevin Owens shows up. He's like, I want to fight. Uh, Big E, a little Big E recap. It starts off with Big E taking on Baron Corbin. Uh, for the most part, this is fairly one side. Uh, Sami Zayn's at ringside giving commentary. And the Knights of Corbin. That's terrible. They, they, they should just stay the forgotten subs. I mean, really? I don't know. <sighs> WWE does so weird stuff with their names and stuff, but it is what it is. God, I have to stop using that. I never said that until my boss started using that. Boo, boss. Oh, I shouldn't. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I have plenty of time. And I'll still be daylight too when I get back from the gym. So, yeah, Big E, he throws his coat at Sami Zayn. <laughs> He's so good at that. At least it's not Corey Graves this time. Someone different. Uh, Big E starts scrappling a little bit. Does the alligator roll. I do, again, I do like it when the re professional wrestlers use amateur moves. I always like that. Uh, Corbin eventually comes back as he gets whipped into the ropes. Has a big clothesline. Uh, Corbin definitely has the role of the bruiser. Uh, let's see. Corbin gets sent to the corner. Big E hits the big ending. But he could not get the one, two, three. Because then the Knights of Corbin show up. Break that up. Big E gets jumped. Paul Cruz comes to the save and... Holla, 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 player. It's going to be a tag team match. So next we have... Big E and Apollo... Wow, they did a lot in 20 minutes. Yeah, half hour. And Pratt, wait, when did I get out of work? Not about 8.40. No, wait. Yeah, hey, 8.40 got home by. They had a lot in 40 minutes. That's good. That was Biggie and Apollo Crews taking on Baron, Corbin, and Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn is definitely the opportunistic heel. Um, Corbin is definitely the more powerful of the two. Paul Cruz, he takes a little bit of the brunt to begin with. Um, let's see here. We're going to strut. 
Uh, Biggie eventually gets in. He gets the hot tag. Uh, again, Apollo Crews gets beat up for the most part. The first half, Biggie gets the hot tag. Gets a big splash. And then there's a dis dissension. Sami Zayn said, no, you two Knights of Corbin, you have to listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. And they're like, no. We'll do what our boss says. Because he's Baron Corbin. And you're not Baron Corbin. Uh, Corbin, yeah, after some dissension, and obviously Sammy said, Sammy Zane said the wrong thing. You know, hey, we're all on the same team here, folks. Yeah, not when you try to take over stuff, Sammy. Uh, Corbin and his knights leave. They, they, <laughs> they left Sammy Zane all by himself. Paul Cruz hits a spinning powerbomb. The next thing we see, we have Kevin Owens talking to Adam Pierce. So, actually, that match. It was, it was, I don't know. Both matches, they were so so. Both ham sandwiches. The power of video editing. Now, let's see here. Here we go. Um, boop, 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 boop. Okay, then we have Big E backstage. Again, he starts, he has the open challenge. Paul Cruz is the first to accept, so we'll probably see that match first on Friday, and I'll be able to watch that whole show. And then, oh wow, so next week's going to be so funky. Starting today, too. It's just a weird day. I can't believe I did get a lot of stuff done. Minus that. Um, then we have the Riot Squad, who got, I think, the Jabra entrance, taking on Natalia and Tamina. And then Billy Kay's there. Billy Kay, she just wants to, like, she's a latcher on. Um, the Riot Squad, I'll tell you what. I was shocked because their gear, it looks like, it looked like to me that Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan were having a 69 backstage. Because for some reason, like, it looks like their regular ring attire was, like, cut out assless. And they were just showing like like spandex panties. Ruby Riot with that short hair looks absolutely amazingly hot though. And Liv Morgan's just Liv Morgan. Again, Ruby Riot, I know who you really are. Heidi Loveless. Yeah, Lovelace. Yes. Not a distant cousin. That still irked me. Just admit to it. Kaya Sona admits being Chris Adams. That's not gonna hurt you. Um, and let's see here. Uh, Tamina was too strong for both of them. Natalia gets tagged in. Then the right squad does her double team. Billy Cannon like switches sides. Like once she figures out which side's gonna win, she just switches sides. And Natalia got uh, rolled up. And that was that was it. This was weird. I'll tell you what. It was a can of soup match. And Billy Kay is just on the side that wins. Then we have Sasha Banks. And Bianca Belair taking on Carmella and Bailey. And this was okay. Um, Sasha gets worked over a lot of the match. Uh, Bailey gets... I guess she grabbed the hair of, of Bianca Belair... And Bianca Belair pulls her hair and sends her sends Bailey into the post. Creative. Creative use of hair. Something which I'm a little bit lacking of, so I can appreciate that. Uh, Carmella then did for a roll-up. Reginald pulls Carmella out of the ring after a pin attempt. Reginald just acts as an entire distraction. Bianca Belair looks like, like, she, like she and Bailey took each other out on the outside. They were just like lying there in like a heap pile of mess. I hope that's not like a, like a real injury. I hope it's like, yeah, we're just supposed to stay out here. Let Sasha Banks get pinned by Carmella. Oh yeah, because Carmella then, because Reginald was distracting Sasha Banks. And Reginald, I think he was that guy in NXT who was the gymnast. Because this guy was doing like backflips and everything. That was impressive. But that's enough to distract Sasha Banks. 
Carmel then swung Sasha Banks around, had a face buster, pinned her one, two, three in the ring. Carmella and Bailey won. Can a suit match. I don't know what it was. Oh, I even wrote soup down. Like, it was meh. And Sonya Deville's back. Boo, Sonya Deville. Boo. Boo. Forever boo. FBSD. Forever boo. Boo forever. Sonya Deville. Uh, she's like, like struts backstage. Yeah. She must have done something with Stephanie in the back. Oh, I did not say that. To get that strip going. I mean, the Street Profits showed up and um, it says Smoke Tack there in uh, New Year's Day celebration. They have some predictions for they're not the broken Matt Hardy. They cannot give predictions. Um, the Street Profits are going to sell the most merch. It will be the best tag team. Oh, on their other prediction, Dolph will be the hard eight kid. And then Dolph and Rude beat them up. So this will... Eventually, Dolph and Rude will get those tag team belts. Eventually, I hope. Then we have Otis and Daniel Bryan taking on Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro. This was actually much better. Although when you have some terrible matches, anything seems good sometimes, I think. Let's see here. On Daniel Bryan and Cesaro, very technical. Oh, this is such a... Ring of Honor match. Um, C Cesaro Castanervis, wherever he was, and Brian Danielson. That was so good. Uh, Daniel Bryan, again, he tried to dive on Cesaro instead. He eats a big European uppercut. It's a big pop up European uppercut. That was great. Shinsuke Nakamura kicks at Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan's the one that's getting isolated. Otis gets the hot tag. He overhead tosses Cesaro. Which is no easy feat. Cesaro is very tall. Again, every so often there are hints of it. Uh, Otis then hits a discus clothesline. Very Luke Harper-esque. Good, good little dig out there to your boss, Otis. I hope we see you next week. And there was a caterpillar. Uh, and then he tried to drop the Vader bomb, but that did not happen. Otis. He's like Pancake Shinsuke Nakamura. Daniel Bryan. Did a super uh, belly to back suplex on the top. Shinsuke tried the flying Juju Katami. That was a little double team there by Otis and Daniel Bryan. Double team actually on Otis by Shinsuke and. Zaro Shinsuke eventually taps to the, the label lock. It's actually a much better match. Cheeseburger match. And then in the main event of the evening, we had Kevin Owens and Jay. Ooh, so? I do miss their haka dance, and I miss um, playing the paint a little bit. Oh, that's right. I have to have that match eventually. Um, let's see here. Starts off with uh, Kevin Owens taking it to Jay. It was a senton. <laughs> One on the outside. Ouch. I love the fact that they said, yeah, that's 270 pounds of grown man falling on you twice. One on the outside, one in the ring. Uh, KO eventually goes after the legs of Jay Uso. Uh, KO could not hit a stunner. He's a super kick instead. Uh, then there was a terrible whiff. Kevin Owens normally doesn't do this. He whiffed. Like, you could tell he was off by at least two feet on some kick by the outside. That was not good. Uh, like Kevin Owens called Roman. To, he took the headset off Corey Graves. Roman, get out here. Get out here, you little bitch. Oh, Kevin Owens is dropping the B word left and right. It's good to see him curse a little bit. Yeah, I called Roman a, the B word. Then finds a pair of handcuffs. He handcuffs Jay to the ring. Um, Jay eats a super kick. That was great. Then after a little beating more, KO handcuffs Jay Uso. Says, you know what, Roman? I'm going to find you. Then he, as he goes, Roman jumps him, and they fight amongst the TV sets. That's never good. 
Um, again, they fight more against the TV sets, which I guess is good. I mean, at least they're they're trying to give the illusion of fighting in the audience, and with this kind of this uh, level match, it's kind of what you need. So I can understand it. I can actually see this happening. That's good when I can when it makes sense and say okay, it's another fighting in the crowd. There's no crowd there. They're all on TV sets, but it, it just has, it just brings back that that close personal feel that, that sometimes professional wrestling sometimes really should have. And again, it was good to see that. Uh, he gets beat up a lot, and then he goes through a table. And then we go, and that's the end of the show. I'll say, what, for the most part, the match serving its purpose. It's continuing the feud. That one super kick was awful. There was no true end. Oh, I hate doing this to you, Kevin Owens. That was a ham sandwich of a match. And that was SmackDown. Again, pretty much a good show. Well, I'm going to get to the gym because I still have stuff to do. Eventually, this video, uh, worst comes to worst, gets uploaded probably tomorrow morning-ish. So this should be up by Monday. Again, it's, the whole holiday always screws up my system. I can never get my head straight after a holiday. There's just so much going on, so much to do. Worrying about... Actually, this month I have the one, two, three jobs. So much stuff going on. But again, I'd like to thank you, my YouTube audience. I hope everyone had a good and happy new year. Um, I did make the two kind of lackluster shows. Again, I kind of did those two on the fly. Um, I'm going to build the Battle of Mardi Gras match a little bit more precisely. But other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I hope your 2021 is starting off good. Hope you're not as busy as I am, because I'm just chaos. Other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And you'll see me.